Welcome to the Kawartha Small Business Podcast, where we believe the Kawarthas can be the most thriving region in Canada for small businesses. So we created a podcast where we have million dollar conversations that help small business owners thrive. I'm Brian Rump from Profit Coach. And I'm Matt Garrity of Matty G Digital. And we are recording from the Thrive Podcast Studio at Thrive Coworking Community in downtown Lindsay, Ontario at 18 Kent Street West. And today we are talking about um, how to know when it's time to close your small business. So I think this is um, a topic that I think people are afraid to talk about, but should be talked about. Um, I've been through or part of several businesses closing, especially back when I was a banker. And, you know, rarely do you get the, you know, no authority comes up and it's like, hey, you, you must close your business. Um, it's not that dramatic. Um, and looking back and reflecting on some of those situations, also seeing people make the decision to close, mm. um, I think it would be just a good uh, opportunity to talk about it. It's a huge financial blow. There's a part of you that thinks, obviously, you started your business thinking you were going to make money. No one starts a business thinking they're not going to make money or be profitable. So it's a huge financial blow because, of course, you're kind of admitting that you're not going to make that money. You're not going to get that return. You're not going to be profitable. Um, and it's, obviously, it's a hit to your ego, too. Yeah, I think a lot of times it's an ego. I think people also hold on hoping that something's mm. going to change. Um, and it's emotional as well because you've put so much into it. So it's a really tough decision to make. It is tough. And then, like you said, hold on and expect something to change. I'm super curious to hear your experiences with not, I don't know if you actually said like you need to close your business, but I'm sure there's people out there that are like expecting things to change, but they're not doing anything different. It's probably a marketing problem. You know what I mean? And they probably are not paying for marketing. Yeah. I think it's multiple things. And that is the biggest one. So I think, you know, very quickly, like one reason to know is like, if you're not willing to invest in marketing, then you should probably close your business. So things aren't magically going to turn around. If you've kind of lost sort of faith or hope, or you're not doing any marketing and it's not working, then holding on and people will just hold on like too long and then they'll lose even more money mm. and then they feel even more defeated when they finally like are forced to make the decision it's true there is no magic authority that's going to come in and tell you to close your business and depending on what your business is a lot of businesses are not going to be profitable like profitable per sale maybe, but they might not be profitable holistically. For instance, like with Thrive and that investment that we put into that, even in the first year, we wouldn't have been profitable and make everything back type of thing if everything was fully booked at capacity. Um, so it's, it's interesting to think about. Yeah, I think it still takes a while. I think there's times where you're like, is this part of the plan? Mm -hmm. What's working? Are we being patient? So there is like, you, you know, you have to be patient with businesses uh, when you start up. I think if you have kind of lost having a plan or a timeline, then mm -hmm. it's hard. Um, I will correct. And sometimes people do come up and say your business is closing if they are sort of seizing your business. Um, that's not as common as we think. So mm -hmm. I, you know, in banking work with hundreds of businesses I never personally was part of a seizure mm. and only a few of my colleagues sort of were ever part of like a seizure where like the bank comes, puts a sign on the door that's like, hey, you're now closed. Um, usually what happens is if you're let, borrowing a bunch of money, you're, having, you're struggling paying it back, they have what they call special accounts. And a lot of those businesses, they work with you to either turn around your business or people come to the decision themselves to like sell things off. So rarely is it like that forced, like, you know, give me your keys, your business is gone type of thing. And who, yeah, it would be like the bank basically that would make that decision, but you're saying they would actually 
talk to you, try to work through it. They're not just going to knock on your door one day and, and yeah. put the eviction notice up. Right? Nobody, you, we never would write a loan if you expect to like have to seize it. Mm -hmm. or by the time you have to come in and take everything and sell it, like you are into major money losing territory. Mm -hmm. The banks, the best way to get paid back a loan is through regularly scheduled payments. Um, again, some people get all concerned if they owe the bank a lot of money. Bank doesn't care about that. If you are regularly paying them back, like that is what they um, care about the most. So they're going to try to find ways to sort of work with you through it voluntarily, closing or selling off um, versus you know just swooping in. Because when you get into that swoop, what happens is you know assets go missing. Like it's never good. So you try to avoid that. At almost all costs. Because the bank doesn't want to swoop in, right? No, it's not there's, even... a, there's a cost to doing that. Yeah, there's a reputation thing. It can be embarrassing like to come in and sort of orderly take down a business. I'm sure it's not every time, but for the most part, when people aren't paying the bank back, it's because there's no money. The bank swooping in isn't going to create money in that situation. Yeah, usually that's a like, hey, we're coming, we're taking all your inventory, and we're selling it off. Um, they prefer you to choose to do that earlier. And often when I've seen people really struggle or delay, it's they want to hold on or they're not facing reality. But then something almost always works out in terms of like they find a buyer for their business. Mm -hmm. Um, I think of one when I was early in commercial, there was someone who came in and I was supporting some uh, commercial account managers and the guy was convinced that he was handing over the keys to his entire business that day, just because it was a, a the nature of the business was as heavily capital intensive, which means you need a lot of expensive, expensive equipment. You have a lot of loans, your payments are high, you need a lot of cash flow and when you start on the spiral of not having a lot of cash it can add up really really quick um, that didn't happen you know he thought he was losing his business and the bank manager was going to come start running it for him the next day what happened was they sort of worked through him they found a buyer who bought partly a good chunk of the business sort of acquired them and i think you know, in the end, he was able to walk away with some money from having owned the business and it still existed and everyone was still employed versus him thinking he was just turning it over, losing his whole life and everyone was going to get fired. So there's always, you know, you really need some outside guidance because there's always usually an option that avoids you losing as much as you think you're going to lose in your yeah, the bank isn't in running a business business. Yeah. They're in a making money business, and it's not going to help for them to swoop in and demand money. Like, there's a reason why they're not getting paid. They're, um, I've never even thought about this until this conversation. It's very interesting. But, of course, they're not going to immediately swoop in and close your business because, like, there's no money there. They need money. They're going to work with yeah, you. They're they like, the how, do, how do we get money out of this? How do we make my money back, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and they don't want, like, I remember a business that was in trouble and they, all their accounts were sort of uh, frozen because they were behind on payroll and taxes and everything. And I was like, how are the employees getting paid? I was like, are they just taking stuff home with them, like, inventory <laughs> and, like, selling it off? And then, you know, they would have suppliers who would, like, show up to, like, get their inventory back because they would have some security over it so like those things are, are sort of messy um, so you don't have to go down and this is why i think it's really important for people to reach out to us because often the you know you think your problems are huge with your business it's probably uh, not doing marketing not doing the right type of marketing mm -hmm. trying to do too much there's things that a coach or marketer can help you with if you when you feel stuck versus delaying it and delaying it and knowing or like being sort of forced to make the decision to close 
versus consciously deciding, oh, maybe I don't want to do all this stuff. It's time to close or sell. Yeah. So what's the title of this? How to know when? Yeah. How to know when it's time to close your business. So when is it time? I think it's when, you know, there's sort of two times. One is if you don't have a plan and you don't want to get a plan and you don't want to do marketing or any of that. If you're like, I just don't want to do any of that, then you might as well get out of business. Like that's kind of sad to say, but you're running a hobby or you're just trying to keep your lifestyle going. You're probably just going to lose more money or more time. So like why delay the inevitable? Mm. Um, I think the other time is, and this is one of my not favorite things, but something I think I've been good at and it, you're kind of like the angel of death is go through an assessment to find out what really needs to happen mm. for you to get back to building the business you want. And if you look at what's in front of you and you're like, you know, I don't have the energy for that, the skill. I don't mm. want to bring in the people that have the skill. I'm not passionate about it. I've tried to get the passion back. You know, then it's maybe time to make the decision to sell or exit hmm. um, but when you at least do it that way you know what it's going to take so i think sometimes people feel like it's a giant failure or that they failed and then it really hurts but when you kind of stare at reality and you're just like you know there's nothing wrong with it not being for me right R growing a business turning one around it's not always for everyone uh, but if you work, you know, with a coach who puts in specific numbers or like mm -hmm. very specific strategies of like, okay, here's what you need to do. And then you sort of reject doing that, then it's, you know, a good time. What, not to give away uh, your secrets, but what things are you looking at in your assessment? I think uh, usually th those are the times when it's always like starts with cash flow. Mm -hmm. So we look at, People be like, well, I'm having cash flow problems. So cash flow is, you know, when you have a problem like that, it's your business is screaming at you for some reason. So um, things that I've seen is sometimes it's, uh, you know, their financial structure might be off. So that maybe they're, and I've seen some great businesses that are functioning great, but they're maybe sprinting to try to pay off loans. And they don't need to be. So you just need kind of a financial restructure to change up their payments or free up some cash mm -hmm. to like get some inventory. Or there's some things like that that, that help. Um, I think uh, marketing is a big one as well. A lot of times people just kind of run on autopilot and they haven't really thought about their, their products or what they're offering or doing proper marketing. Um, they end up doing you know, random things or they've, you know, they've sent out flyers for years and that's all they did. And now that's not working. Um, so it's understanding like, okay, here's the real problems. Often, you know, you don't have cash. It's because of sales. So it's like, okay, how do we get more sales? And it becomes a marketing thing or a streamlining what you're focusing on thing, um, or just telling the truth of what that number is. So if I say, okay, you go you need to go make you know a quarter of a million dollars this quarter, at least now you know what it's going to take to get there. Versus, I think some people get in those traps and they're like, oh, it's tight, and but they don't know what that number is. Um, and then you know when you kind of put those pieces in place, it's like, can I tackle this challenge? Mm -hmm. And sometimes people say, no, I don't. Yeah. At the time you start to look to sell it or? Yeah, I think then then it's like, then it becomes a different question. So it's like, hey, it's time for me to like leave or close. So mm -hmm. then it's like, now I start looking for, is someone going to buy it? Or am I just going to wind it down? And, you know, if I own my building, maybe I sell my building. Um, am I going to try to find a buyer? Am I going to try to sell it to like an employee? Like mm -hmm. you might have a manager who's like, been sticking around for ages who like is passionate about the business and like wants more control and maybe wants the business and then it's like you think it's a big defeat for you and there it's the like greatest day of their life because they've just been offered to buy 
this business that they love and they want to invest and grow in it. So you start having those conversations of like what's the best way to sort of exit and get out of the business. Uh, again, rarely is it going to be, well, I just have to walk away and like let the vultures come and like, <laughs> take everything and lose everything. Um, and you, and what I've seen is people find themselves way happier. Mm. So one of my first coaching clients I ever worked with, I won't mention who it is, but they made that decision where mm. <clears throat> we put together this plan. We worked together for like probably a year and a half. And I think it came down to it just wasn't what they personally wanted to do. And they decided to wind down and close. And then it turned out that was a few months before COVID hit. Yeah. And now I'm like, they probably saved themselves years of stress and probably hundreds of thousands of dollars. Wow. And they were able to sort of go then do something that they really enjoyed doing and just have a much better quality of life. Yeah. Um, and that was where I really, to me, I felt good about that because they knew what they needed to do to sort of turn it around. And they were able to say, no, I don't want to do that. Or that's not for me. Or I would need to hire a person who has this skill to help me. And then you can make the choice of what you want to do. So to me, the earlier you can do that, the better. It's interesting though. It all comes back to a plan. Yeah, it's probably a marketing problem, but it's a, not having a plan and being focused on is your plan on a path or not. Yeah. And then as soon as you recognize, okay, we've, we've gone off the path. Sometimes it's fun to go off the path. But then how far off that path do you really want to go before? Okay, now we've got a problem. But we are literally lost in this forest. So, yeah, and I think that's the like the plan, the focus. Yeah, if you're changing focus, how long do you give it? Because there is a fine line between like patience and like failure. There's all sorts of business stories of people who are you know, down to their last dollar and then something happens, or like you've been pounding away at these like marketing activities and then suddenly you hit the tipping point where everyone knows who you are and everything starts working yeah. a little bit so you have to i think you know most businesses they'll people will say things like well you're not profitable for the first however long three years is the party line right and that's to me i, I hate that because some businesses should be profitable from day one Others aren't necessarily going to be, but that's because you're working to build just the awareness and build your uh, the number of customers you have. And so you have to stick it out. But if you're not progressing on that, so if you're like, hey, it's going to take me five years to build up the number of clients I need to be sustainably profitable then, you know, if you're not seeing that n number progress, then you got to change something. So it's why it's, again, having a plan, you know, having a coach to talk you down through the, <laughs> the patient times. Uh, but as soon as you kind of give up, it's time to, like, get out. Because no, I won't say no business, but basically, unless you get some crazy luck with something external happening, he isn't going to just magically start succeeding mm -hmm. with you not being engaged on a plan. Yeah, that's fascinating. I never thought we're ever going to talk about this. This is interesting. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I added it on because I was like, I think people need to know this. Because I think the other part is I think people feel overly like they failed mm. when it's time to close a business. But everyone I know has always bounced back. They're happier. They've maybe gone and worked in another business and been happy and contributed to that. They might go on and open their own business again or mm -hmm. try something different. Lots of people talk about their, you know, they had five failures or it took them, you know, five tries to get the business recipe to work properly. Like that's okay too. That happens. Um, I think if you, especially as like an investor, in your own business, you might try something and then realize fairly quickly that, oh, the market's not there for that, or people, you know, everyone said they wanted it, but no one's willing to pay for it. 
like there's all these reasons why you know it might be time to you know think about doing something different or just closing well i think it's about strategically closing too because i think i i don't know this like just from observing other businesses that have kind of what feel like of course abruptly closing because i don't know anything about the situation and then i i think about this conversation like what did they do do they just like okay we can't do this anymore uh, and that's fair and they pull out and they don't open their door again yeah. but like did they go down a process of trying to change something were they actively doing marketing did they put it out there pretty actively that they're trying to sell the business how do we strategically close the business like can we what assets can we sell like yeah. if, if we're a retail business like are we selling back all the clothing are we finding people on marketplace to buy the shelves like yeah. what can we take to strip down and sell <laughs> and oh, i don't know how much that happens of course i've not experienced it firsthand i'm not um, experienced secondhand or whatever i don't know any close friends that have gone through that um, but from just my peripheral view here it seems like it's abrupt closures <laughs> yeah and i think that's partly because nobody knows what to do yeah. you start going down a path where you just get into it and then suddenly you're scrambling and that's where you know sometimes people come in and take advantage of you and i don't know that we don't i don't feel like we see it as much lately because the you know one of my other theories is that the rising house prices have fueled small businesses because if you own a home and your house doubles in price, instead of closing your business, you're just going to refinance your house and pump some of that money Ugh. in your business, which I, my gut feeling, and then also some of things I've seen is that that type of thing has been happening a lot. So we're not seeing a lot of like liquidation businesses or um, oh, head yeah. of business sales. Like you used to see those types of things a little bit more. So I think what's happening is people have put up the appearance of having a good business, but they're not actually making money and they're putting their own money into it. And then this is where like the sunk cost fallacy comes in. Yeah. And uh, also be careful whose advice you take. Cause I remember talking to someone who was advising someone to close their business and they had hired a lawyer and the lawyer was like, well, if you close it, like you're going to lose, you know, their number was like $250,000. So the lawyer was like, you've got to keep it open because like you've put 250000 into it. That's the, the sunk cost fallacy where we shouldn't make future decisions based on how much money is in it. Um, so they just kept losing like fifty grand a year. So then, you know. Then you're half a million. Yeah, a few years, years later. Years jeepers. You know, so like at some point you have to like change something. Like, and it needs to be a shock. I, I always say like a force or something where you're trying to, you know, putting real money into your marketing and you've seen it too, where people like don't really market for years. And then suddenly like, well, I need instant results for cheap. And like, that doesn't work either. So you have to like decide to like, <laughs> let's rebuild the marketing system from scratch and give it a good go before you just crash. Yeah, absolutely. There's a, now that you say it, though, I've seen a couple um, closing sales happening right now. I don't; they're, they don't sound like they're for uh, any other reason other than one people like their lease is up. They've got a couple locations. Chessler's shoes there; they're not renewing the lease in Lindsay. They got other spots, I think, in Peterborough and yeah. somewhere else. And then hobbies and stuff um, on Kent Street. There, and so like he's, I believe, I don't think it's a him. And her, I think it's like an older couple. They're retiring, yeah. and they're like, "Oh, we're done here." Yeah, so so like so a liquidation cool. sale and, and going that way. So yeah, and that's a whole other like when we look to sell our business. You know, we've talked about that before. Are we, you know, selling it? But sometimes it's just we're going you know, to liquidate and leave. So and that's you know we've made this strategic decision to close or change, and that happens with locations. Sometimes you downsize locations, or you change your locations. You just you get older and you liquidate and that's your plan um so yeah it's like not hanging on too long while you lose sort of more and more money yeah while doing it some cost 
Fallacy? Yeah. That's a scary one for business. I've never heard of it in that regard, and that's frightening. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, a, it's a tough one, and that's where, you know, we've talked before on this podcast about, you know, wasting money wisely, and that's where people will say, well, I'm not doing marketing because, you know, I spent money on marketing once and it didn't work. <laughs> and it's like once the money is gone from your account, there's nothing you can do that's going to bring it back. <laughs> so you have to make your decisions based on the future. Um, you and I have been in a few pitches where people are like that. It's like, well, I can't start again. I, you know, oh, I already yeah. paid this much money. And it's like, well, that money's gone. So you have to make these decisions based on your future, uh, which is the same with, you know, businesses who usually they come to me a bit too late if they're like cash flow is really tight. Um, so it's like, well, let's talk about it earlier so we could try to get ahead of the game and, you know, try some interventions that are going to work before, you know, you are so close where you almost have no choice left, but to close it. Uh, but then if it's a good foundational business, that's where, again, a buyer is going to be like, oh, well, I'll come in because if you can buy the assets inexpensive and have the money to invest in proper marketing, you know, you now have the, the formula for a really good business opportunity. Yeah, you're all set. I had someone last week tell me that they were not going to consider my proposal of updating their website with copy and like structural um, redesign basically before the marketing tactics that I did because they had an audit done that came back nearly perfect and she was very proud of it. And the start of the website was like, hi, I'm so-and-so welcome to this business name. And I'm like, this is terrible. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like you're toast. Like, I don't know where you're getting your advice from. And like, I don't know, like if you paid for an audit and you got nearly perfect, probably not a good audit. <laughs> yeah. Or was it like, yeah, free audit or who knows? Or, or what was it auditing it for? Yeah. And that's the thing, like, yeah, I right away was like, you're not going to, this is not going to be a good fit is my guess long term. <laughs> yeah, and it's uh, not. And at the end of the day with all of these things, I always think, you know, numbers don't lie. Cash doesn't lie. So, and there's always, almost always a solution where there's a strategy. And then it's, if you can figure out what that is, then you can choose whether or not you're doing it or not. Or you can try something, but as soon as you kind of give up hope, or or your strategy becomes hope, it's time to like close it down before you lose too much more. A new hope, Star Wars. Yeah, a new hope. <laughs> this will be the thing. The four when the four oh seven's completed, my business is just gonna boom. Possibly oh, booming. Or the BIA starts to do more marketing. More people are gonna be in my business buying my product. Yeah, like there's always these external hopes that parking, if parking was better, oh my goodness, my business would be so much better. Yeah, like all of these things versus, you know, really uh, doing what you need yeah. for yourself. And I think, you know, you said it, it really comes down to a plan of like knowing what's realistic. Like, am I in, you know, the valley of death where I know I'm funding stuff and I'm not making money, but I'm making traction? on it's going to change and here's when it's going to change um that's fine right not every you know a lot of businesses lose money a lot lose seasonally not everyone's profitable um but if you if nothing is changing then it might be time to give up or you know bring in some fresh like skills or assessment or an intervention to make it work Oh, that's such a, a marketing intervention. Yeah, oh, that's really good. <laughs> that's actually that's good. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> who who listening has a friend who needs a marketing intervent? That's awesome. In intervention. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's a whole other <laughs> podcast idea. I'm going to put that one to the list. All right, Matt. Um, any final uh, last thoughts? Is this the time where I get to tell people about me? That's next. This okay. is sort of um, wrapping it up biggest learning or takeaway i always like the way that you talk about business and people in general because like you make it not as dramatic 
as a lot of people think it is where the idea of like, okay, maybe things aren't going well and I'm so embarrassed. And you, you, I just, I'm always impressed by how you are able to articulate it to people and calm me even (laughs) in a lot of cases. Um, it's, it shouldn't be so scary. It is business. Like sometimes business can be cold and we have to look at it. Like, are we on a path or not? And we need to either stop walking this path or figure it out. So, yeah, and I think, you know, the layer on that and my final thought is your business closing or failing doesn't mean you're a failure. Mm. And when you really look at so many, like, successful entrepreneurs, they all have stories of, like, ventures that didn't work. Lots of people are like, oh, we thought this was going to be great, and then it wasn't. Or we opened this thing and it was really awesome for a year and something in the market changed and it started like losing money and we had to make the tough decision to end it. And when you're that sort of professional repeat business person, like you get better and better at recognizing that. But to me, just knowing that that's a thing or that like life isn't going to end if my business fails I think would help people sort of save themselves from losing a lot mm-hmm. and open up more opportunity for someone else or even for themselves. You can mm-hmm. kind of move on and move on to the next thing. That's awesome. In life. All right. What's the thing you want people to know about you and where do they find you? If things are not going the way you think for your business and you are thinking about closing up shop, You probably have a marketing problem. Not enough people know that you exist. And as the demographics of Lindsay and Kortha Lakes are changing, more and more people are moving up here and less and less people know that your business exists. I can help you get found on Google in less than 60 days. Just go to my website to book a marketing intervention at mattygdigital.com. I love that. And I am a uh, business coach that helps your business get money with grants, increased sales, and streamlining your business for profit. Um, I am also great at those interventions. Um, Your cash is tight. Your friend's cash is tight. Um, Please uh, find me at profitcoach.ca. Matt and I would love to help you uh, have an intervention to launch, grow, or recharge your business. And we want to work with you. Um, If you want to discuss working with us or be a guest on this podcast, uh, you can send us an email to set it up at Kawartha Small Business Podcast.ca. And remember, we believe the Kawarthas can be the most thriving region in Canada for small businesses.